So I, I called this various two-dimensional force problems. Uh, I'm going to cut corners a tiny bit here, and really, I'm going to look at one main one, and this is going to be on your test a week from today. We call it the lawnmower problem. You can look at the picture in example one and see why we call it the lawnmower problem. It's where you have a situation where you have an object on a horizontal flat surface, but the force itself is at an angle. You're either pushing down the lawnmower handle, or if instead of a handle, if you had a rope, you could be pulling up at an angle on the rope. Did I say angle? Guess what this is going to be a job for? Components. Okay. The tricky part here is it's very, very easy to mix, mix things up and miss things. So what's the official definition of a lawnmower problem? Where you have other vertic vertical force components besides gravity and normal force. Uh, which means, by the way, the normal force will not be mg. We're going to have to be much more careful. Or on the ramp, the normal force won't be mg cos. Of course, it won't. Latecomer. Dope. So, the normal force is not mg, or on a ramp, the normal force is not mg cos. There's other stuff going on. And Brisa, the message is going to be, once you open your eyes, uh, just be really m much more cautious with your free body diagrams. Hopefully you'll recognize that you need to be more cautious because you got weird stuff. Oh, that's different. Or if you get to the homework later on, for example. Oh, that's different. Whoa, that's different. That's your message, Devin, to say, hey, be really careful with your components. Pay attention. Don't use all of my shortcuts. I think you can still use two lines as sign, and of course it is. But be really, really careful with the rest of it. So example one says this, find the normal force, let's call that part A, find the force of friction, let's call that part B, and find the acceleration, let's call that part C. Um, there's a small gap right here. Again, I couldn't quite get it to nudge down. Pretend that gap isn't there and that it's actually resting on the surface. How are we going to start this out? Free body diagram. So what are the forces acting on this? Get the obvious one. Okay, I have mg straight down. Do I need to break gravity up into its components? No. Now, when we did forces on a ramp, as soon as we did gravity, I said stop, don't go to the normal force, deal with your angles and break it up into components first. It's going to be the same thing here. Have we just done gravity? I'm going to say stop. Don't go to the normal force yet. I see other weird angles. We're going to deal with those first. We have this 200 Newton force at an angle. Devin, did I say angle? This is going to be a job for. And I guess since we're pushing down and right, I can break it up into that one and that one. Now, since we're on level ground again, I'll call it Fy and Fx. I guess you could call them parallel and perpendicular, but let's go back to our more familiar vertical and horizontal. Oh, and uh, there's my angle. Okay. So I'm going to imagine, Connor, that this 200 at an angle that I say angle, this 200 slanty is actually the same as pushing straight down and pushing straight right. <coughs> We're going to go back to our free body diagram now. What are the forces acting on this? We already said get the obvious one, and all of you said gravity. We pause because there is an angle before we got to the normal force. I'm now going to draw the normal force. Here's the question. Is the normal force going to be the same size as mg, smaller than mg, or bigger than mg? Why bigger? Okay. 
the normal force is canceling out gravity, but it's also canceling out, do you see that vertical area pushing down? So I'm gonna eyeball how long both of those are, however your diagram works, and I'm gonna draw the normal force as long as both of those combine. So for me, my normal force actually ends up about like that. Okay. This is a job for a free body diagram. Get the obvious one. Is there angle? Stop. Do your components first. Now get your normal force. By the way, what if instead of pushing down, what if I was lifting up? Can you see that would actually make the normal force smaller because the up component and the normal force would be canceling out gravity. What else? Is there friction in this question? Yeah? Which way? Sorry? Because I'm pretty sure this is accelerating to the right because there is a FX pushing it to the right. There is a horizontal component pushing it to the right. I'm pretty sure friction. Not quite sure how big to draw that one yet. Okay. Here we go. What's A want me to find? Normal force. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know some other forces that will end up being the same size as the normal force. Are we sinking into the ground like quicksand? Are we flying to like Superman? The short version of that really means everything down equals everything up. Can someone give me some type of an equation-y thing for the normal force? I'll give you a hint. Oh, nice. Don't need to give you a hint. Everything down, directly straight down, sub equals everything up. Um, if we've been lifting up, I think, by the way, you'd end up with the normal force equaling mg minus Fy. Fyi on Fy, we have to do some uh, trick. Here... I don't know if I can use my stupid Y as sign. Let, let, let's find out. Devin, who's giggling there at my FYI, FY. Um, the FY, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. Opposite Devin. The 200 that they gave me. Which trig function? O and H? Oh. It's, yeah, as a matter of fact, O is sine. Yes, OH is sine. So I'll do that over here in the margin here uh, because I haven't done this triangle before. It's going to be the sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. How would you get the FY by itself, Dev? Okay, now let's bring that over to our uh, part A here. So you're telling me the normal force is going to be MG plus 200 sine theta. Will Fy always be sine? I think in this case, only if they give you this angle, not if they give you that angle. So I wouldn't always go with that one. Because when we're drawing, when we're breaking gravity up into its perpendicular and parallel components, Pierce, because I can control the order that I draw things in, and I can control where I'm putting the angle, we can use the stupid two lines as sine stick. You can't quite always do it here. Uh, oh, and instead of sine theta, I guess I could have written uh, 20, yeah? Here we go. Let's do that on the next line. Uh, M, 50, 9.8, plus 200, sine 20. How big is the normal force? 50 times 9.8, plus 200, sine 20. 558.404, that there? I'll go 558.4 and then I'll round to three sig figs, but I'm going to be using this. 558.4, which is 558 newtons. Josh, what does B want me to find? Oh. My first instinct is friction is what times what? Mu 
times the normal force. I always start there. Did they give me mu? Yeah, okay. I'm kind of still heading that way. Did they give me the normal force? <gasps> now, here's what I want you to notice. By pushing down, did the normal force get bigger or smaller? Bigger. So what happened to friction? So this thing became tougher to slide. This is why this goes back to what I've been showing you for over a year now. This explains why pushing down makes it so much tougher to move this desk. Lifting up makes it so much easier to move this desk. Because when I lift up, what happens to the normal force? Gets smaller. What happens to friction? Gets smaller. But there's the actual mathematics of it. So it's just going to be 0 0.1 times 558.4. I can do that in my head. It's going to be 55.84. When you multiply by 0.1, that just moves the decimal. Really, Taylor? When you multiply by 0.1, it just moves the decimal over one point, my friend. So it's going to be 55.8 newtons. Okay. That's not too bad. Uh, I'm scrolling down. You all have the diagram still on your page. Seb, what's C asking me to find? What's the third part that's asking me to find? Acceleration. What was our strategy for finding the acceleration? This is where we went, who's winning? Look very carefully. Who's winning? And I'm going to give you a hint. Don't say 200, because 200 is not winning. You said F, someone said Fy, isn't it Fx? Because I think it's accelerating that way. If Fy was winning, by the way, it would have to be sinking into the ground like quicksand, is it? No. Okay. So Fx. Who's losing? Ah. This is a nice extension. Okay. So we get this minus that equals Ma. Friction, I know, it's 55.84 if I drop that down. And if I hadn't calculated that already, Devin, I would walk through part A and part B. So if they had just said find the acceleration, which is probably what I would do on a test, I would clue in. I better find those first. I don't know Fx. Oh, let's go back up here. Fx adjacent opposite or hypotenuse. Devin, I think Fx is adjacent. Anybody want to take a guess if Fy is sine, which trig function do you think Fx is? Of course it is. We'll do the proof just once over here in the margin. I think you're going to end up with cosine of theta equals Fx over 200. And really, 200 seems to be the applied force at an angle in this question. How would you, Josh, get the Fx by itself? OK. So I think we can then safely say. 200 cos 20 minus 55.84. And let's get the A by itself right now. We're going to divide by the mass. Which well, What was the mass I've scrolled down? 50? That equals the acceleration. Now, in this one, the mass does not cancel. Which makes sense, because the heavier an object is, the tougher it is to slide across the floor. The mass shouldn't cancel. Uh, I'm going to get 200, co 200, Mr. Duick. Cos 20 minus 55.84 divided by 50. You get 2.64? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now that you have the acceleration, uh, supposing I told you that we started at rest, could you figure out a V final if I gave you a time or a distance if I gave you a final velocity? All, all that stuff is back in play as well. So this is the lawnmower question. And really, it's only two possibilities. You're either pushing down at an angle or pulling up at an angle. I think
think the next one is pulling up at an angle. Here we go. A force of 18 newtons is applied at a 21 degree angle to the mass below. And it looks like this time, based on that arrow, we're pulling up. I'm guessing somebody has a rope maybe slung over their shoulder and they're pulling up. Or they're getting clever, like I showed you with the desk. They're lifting up. If mu equals 0.23, find the acceleration. How am I going to start this one out? Free body diagram, what are the forces acting on this? Get the obvious one. We're going to have good old mg down. Boy, that gravity looks really crooked. Let's try that again, Mr. Duke. What else? Uh, I see a force at an angle. Before I do the normal force, I better break that force at an angle up into its components. And it's going to be Fx and Fy. What else? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? Good. I'll really exaggerate it so it catches my eye. Or really, ideally, that length plus that length should pretty much equal gravity, and they roughly do. What else? I think that way. Okay. Um, the three black lines and this mystery force of 18 newtons. If I asked you to draw a free body diagram, hint, hint, on this, that's what you would draw. You would not on your free body diagram actually include the red lines. You could as dotted lines. I wouldn't take marks off. I would just say don't do them as solid lines. Otherwise, you've accidentally drawn that 18 twice, once as the slanty and once as its components. All right. What does this question want me to find? The acceleration. Oh, so we're going to start out with who's winning? Who's winning? FX. Who's losing? Okay. Nope. And that's going to equal MA. Now, in the previous question, Alec, I broke all these up into steps. I think part A, I said find normal force. Part B, I said find friction. But I think I also said to you, I probably wouldn't walk you through all the steps. We're just going to find the acceleration. Fx, I think I need to do some trig. Let's go back and look at my triangle. Uh, I think it's going to be adjacent and hypotenuse. Which trig function? I think it's going to end up being 18 cos 21. Don't believe me? Over here in the margin, you could go cos 21 equals fx over 18 minus friction is what times what? Mu times the normal force. That equals... MA. I don't know the normal force. Oh, ugh. Okay. Over here, off on the right, let's try and get an expression for the normal force. Bryce, are we sinking into the ground like quicksand? Are we flying into the air like Superman? We are? No. No. So what that means is everything down has to equal everything up. Everything down has to equal what two forces are straight up? Normal force and Fy, or Fy and normal force. So I think the normal force is going to be mg minus Fy. We're going to be bold here, Justin. We're going to try and do this algebraically. I could crunch this and get an answer, but I'm actually going to take this and stick it into that equation there. So now I'm going to end up with 18 cos 21 minus mu and then in brackets 
m g minus f y that equals m a and Pauline, you don't have to do this algebraically. You could crunch this and get a number and just move it over. But I'm showing you for what it's worth. If you're like me, a nerd, and you like to do these all in one fell swoop at the end, it's doable. Because how would I get the A by itself? Divided by M. Oh, I got Fy. I think it's going to be sine. Let's do a quick double check. Up here, opposite. Yeah, I'm pretty sure sine 21 equals Fy over 18. So if you want to do this all algebraically, I think you end up with this. 18 cos 21 minus mu mg minus 18 sine 21. all divided by m, that equals a. Again, Josh, let me emphasize, you don't have to do this all algebraically. I'm just showing you how it all fits together. I think now it's plug and chug. a is going to be 18 cos 21 minus, I've scrolled down, what's mu? I don't know, what's mu with you? What's mu? 0.23. Bracket. M. Was it 7? Yep. Times 9.8 minus 18 sine 21 all divided by 7. I gotta be honest, I, I could type all this in, but this is about where my ugliness on a calculator reaches its limits. Although some of you with those nice Casios might find this easier. I mean, if I'm going to type this, it's going to be bracket 18 cos 21. I have to close off the cos minus 0.23. I've got to open another bracket 7 times 9.8 minus 18 sine 21. I got to close off the sine. I got to close off the open bracket. I got to close off the top divided by 7. I'm pretty sure the answer is 0.3585, but to try and track all that, Bryce, I think what I would do is I would type this inner bracket right here first. I would go 7 times 9.8 minus 18 sine 21. And then I would go 18 cos 21 minus 0.23 times answer button divided by 7. And I'm really hoping we also get point... Oh, I'm way off. Is it 2.55 or is it... No. Ah! Now I've wrecked my answer button thingy. Dope. Okay, i got to go back. There's the inside of the bracket. I forgot to close off this cosine right there, silly. Point three five. Okay, I was right the first time. So... 0.359 if I go to three sig figs. Barely accelerating. Is that okay, Mackenzie? Really, that's about the limit of what I can throw at you on flat horizontal ground. We could be pushing down at an angle like the previous one, or we could be lifting up at an angle. Example two is cool, but I got to cut corners somewhere this year, so we're going to go like that. We're going to go like that. We're going to go like that. We're going to say, here's your homework. So you can try number one and number two. Number three, this is an example of what I could throw at you on a ramp. Here, gravity you're going to break up into components. I think the normal force is going to be perpendicular plus the 12. The otherwise, it's the same old, same old, same old. 4 and 5. Uh, you know what? No, I'm going to skip 4 and 5. 
three is good. Instead, I'll give you seven. Seven is a good example of going completely backwards. We did stuff like number seven last lesson where I gave you a force pushing up the ramp, like tension or something like that. Uh, here, I'm giving you the acceleration and asking you to work your way all the way backwards and figure out what the force up the ramp would have to be. So reverse engineering from last day. Uh, we'll skip eight, we'll skip nine, we'll skip 10. 11 is good. Twelve is good. Thirteen is good. Skipping fourteen. Sixteen is good. I skipped fifteen. I like number sixteen. I like number sixteen. I like number sixteen. Number sixteen is a nice question. So that really brings us to the end of what we're looking at with forces. Again, if I've done my job right, hopefully you haven't learned much new aside from the components. It was more reinforcing what we did last year. I do have a cool video I want to show you, though.